Welcome to Feminine Roadmap Podcast. I'm your host, Gina Farrar. Each week, I bring you an inspiring conversation to help you navigate the challenges and changes of midlife so that you can not only survive, but thrive in your second half. Hello, Feminine Roadmappers. It is Gina here, and today is a special day. It is my 53rd birthday, and I'm so excited to share it with you. I have been planning this birthday celebration with you for months, and yet as it got closer and closer, I could not decide what to talk about. Like, I was completely unsure of what to talk about, and then About three weeks ago, a friend of mine, Cecilia, called, and she asked me if I would consider sometimes doing a podcast by myself. And I told her, yeah, I've been planning on doing it on my birthday. And she encouraged me to consider doing that once in a while and to just kind of share what it is that I'm going through in life. So it was more of a just share your journey with us and share what you're learning and So, of course, I've been on this journey of life along with you, and there have been a lot of things that have happened in the last year and a half. So as I thought about it, I was trying to figure out how to share. And what I've decided to share with you is just the honest and real journey of how I've been navigating stress and overwhelm in the past year and a half. So if you've been listening to my podcast any length of time, you've heard me share that I'm in a season of life where I am building this platform of Feminine Roadmap. I'm speaking to share my life and encourage women who are navigating the challenges and changes of midlife. Meanwhile, my father-in-law died a year and a half ago, and my husband and I have been the primary caregivers for her and all of her needs. So I am her a person that schedules her doctor's appointments, makes sure her medications are okay, any kind of those things, as well as when there's a nurse involved or physical therapy, all of that is what I've been taking care of for the last year and a half. Also, uh, I'm an only child and my mother has been needing support as well. As neither of them drive, I'm the driver and the scheduler and the doctor person. And so I've been very, very busy taking care of both my mother and my mother-in-law so that they have the help and support that they need so that they have, you know, just someone walking through these difficult journeys with them. In the midst of that, of course, is life in general and the responsibilities and the things I have to remember. And I drop the ball here and there and I drop the ball on my family or I drop the ball on my mom or my mother-in-law or I drop the ball with myself. I decided that the topic today needed to be how to navigate that process of stress and overwhelm because frankly um, I've lived it I don't have it mastered so let me start with the caveat that you know I really don't have it mastered but what I do have is a cup of something wonderful here I have a cup of English afternoon tea straight from England from the Buckingham Palace store that makes me very very happy And so I brought my cup of something wonderful. I hope you can grab a cup of something wonderful and just share with me the journey that I have been on. So why don't we go ahead and jump right into the process of how I've been navigating the sense of overwhelm and stress. And in that context, I do want to share that for me, I don't tend to use the word, oh, I'm so stressed. Oh, I'm so stressed. That's not my languaging. My body feels it, my mind feels it, my family knows I'm feeling it, but I don't identify it that way. But I feel like overwhelm is a word that I can relate to a little bit more. It's that feeling of what I am and what is required of me is out of balance. Uh, The state of overwhelm for me is like the fulcrum has tipped away from my actual ability to meet and Um, even just meet. Let's not even talk exceed. Let's just like talk bare minimum meet. And so I've hit that place hundreds of times in the last year and a half of just feeling very inadequate, overwhelmed, frustrated, and just generally not really knowing what to do. So I've had to figure out how am I going to navigate this season of my life in such a way that I don't damage myself 
in the midst of it because people are relying on me and I have to take care of me. So I have come up with five steps that I use and I identified that I do. Now I'm going to give them to you in a specific order, but they don't have to go in that specific order. As a matter of fact, they're very interchangeable and sometimes they're happening all at the same time. And they all start with R. That's just how it came to me. So I alliterated, which is so much fun. Takes me back to when I used to teach Bible study and I would speak at women's retreats. I really enjoyed alliterating because it helps remember. So hopefully my alliteration of the letter R in how to navigate overwhelm will be helpful for you. So the very first thing that came to my mind is reevaluation. I feel like there's a constant need to reevaluate daily where I'm at, what needs to be done, what's important, and really part of that reevaluating daily and sometimes more than once a day is you know where is your energy on a scale of 1 to 10 you know 1 would be down in the dumps 10 would be i'm i've got it all under control my energy is great i don't feel overwhelmed so on a scale of 1 to 10 where is your energy and reevaluating your energy is super important because it's very easy for us to continue to pour out and to do and pour out and to do. And the next thing you know, we're completely sucked dry. So we really do need to think about where our energy is at, what is really important, reevaluating. Am I responding to the tyranny of the urgent or am I being kind of purposeful and intentional in the way I'm going about each of my days? Now, I know that sometimes emergencies come up, and that is a reality, that sometimes we do have to alter the course of what we've planned for ourselves. I know that full well. But it's still important as things come up for us to reevaluate what we had planned, what has come up, and prioritizing those things so that we are not overwhelming ourselves in our minds. You see, the reevaluation for me is that process of really recognizing how I'm thinking about a situation, how I'm perceiving it, how I'm framing it, and then how I'm responding to it. Because the way that I think about something is the way that I respond to that something or that someone. So I have to constantly be reevaluating what am I thinking and how am I thinking about that thing so that I do not get into reactionary mode. I'm really kind of focusing on reevaluating so I'm responding. You know, I've said this before, but we want to make sure that we are a thermostat, that we're setting the temperature. We're not being a thermometer and responding or reacting to the temperature. We want to set the tone. We want to set the temperature. So that takes constant reevaluation of ourselves. How did I handle that? Why did I handle it that way? and thinking about how maybe I could do it better in the future. For me, it has been a lot more of that, really thinking about how I would rather do it in the future. You know, friends, this midlife journey is new to all of us. None of us have been in midlife before, and there is a certain amount of grace we need to extend to ourselves in this season because, doggone it, it is hard. It is so hard hard to do all the things. I would say every season of life has its challenges, but I can honestly say when I started Feminine Roadmap, I started it because I was listening to conversations of other women going into midlife and I thought, oh my goodness, this is more things than I think I've ever had to think about or handle or do in any season of my life. And the transitions are so great. There's so many of them. Many of us are becoming empty nesters. A lot of my friends' marriages are struggling or their jobs are changing and their bodies are changing. Let's not even talk about menopause. There's so many things happening at this point in our lives that we have to be in that state of awareness. Where am I at? Evaluating, reevaluating. And I chose re-evaluate because we're not doing it one time. <laughs> it's a process of doing it again and again and again. And one of the tools that someone shared with me 
was to say, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to delegate? And what do I need to delete? So what really is my responsibility that's super important that I do? Where can I delegate? Where are there tasks that maybe I feel like I do them better or it's just quicker if I do it myself, which I think most of us as women, it's like, you know what? It's just easier if I do it myself. But I'm not sure if it really is easier in the long run, right? That's where that re-evaluation comes in. It's like, okay, maybe it's easier in the moment to just get it done, but we're moving something off our plate to take care of something that someone else could possibly do. That delegation piece is something I've been working on, and it has been challenging because sometimes people that should maybe potentially be helping aren't doing it and you have to keep asking them it's important that we do keep asking them because there are things that we are all going through and to leave one person bearing the burden of anything isn't healthy or good for anyone so please continue to reevaluate what do i really need to do what's what's like super important that i do what could be delegated And if there's things that we have on our plate that really aren't important at all in the broad scheme of things, I would say that's something that we delete. We let it go. You know, some time ago for me, I stopped going to home parties, even online parties, because I have to remember the date and there's all these things. And besides this, by the time we hit midlife, what more do we actually need anyway? I was just thinking about how I need to reevaluate what I even own and get rid of some stuff, right? So our reevaluation process is really part of our sanity process, my friends. Um, Navigating overwhelm, being aware of where I really am at, um, having someone who can maybe help you reevaluate, someone who is safe and healthy and has a good perspective. At the end of the day, you and I need to make these decisions for ourselves, but I tell you, a community is so helpful when we're trying to figure things out and our emotions might make it difficult for us to have clarity. So that reevaluation, I think, is so important. And then the next step, once we're reevaluating, and I think these two really go together constantly, is resetting. So once we've reevaluated, then we need to reset. What did we decide we need to do? Then that becomes the focus. What did we decide we need to delegate? Then that becomes the next thing we need to work on, and then what needs to go, we just let it go without guilt because we are only one person. We can only do so much. And so finding that team of support, when we reset, it really comes down to setting a schedule that is realistic. Now, I've been going through some coaching and The schedule has been a big part of the conversation because I'm good at writing things down, but I'm not always good at following through. There's some kind of weird glitch in my brain, but I've been mastering my schedule over the past 12 weeks in order that I can make 2020 a year of more clarity, more accomplishment, better communication, all of those things. Like each year, I want to be getting better at what I do so that I can serve you, my tribe better. I can serve my family better. And that I feel like this life, this one life that I've been given is being lived in a way that's meaningful. So when I reset, I've done my evaluation and my reevaluation. Now I reset. I have to reset my mind, my thoughts, my body. And so the reset's kind of a large bucket of, okay, let me look at my schedule. In my schedule, I need to make time to breathe. Literally, ladies, breathing has been the greatest tool of my life right now. I know that sounds like funny advice, but let me tell you that learning to breathe properly and regularly has been very beneficial for me. So the breathing, what I do is I sit still, I close my eyes, and I take 10 very deep breaths. I breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth. I try to have the exhale be a little bit longer. And I do that throughout the day to reset my thinking and reset my brain and reset my emotions. It's amazing how much breathing has been a tool over the last year and a half. True story, (laughs) 
the breathing was happening naturally. Like I was finding myself sighing or taking deep breaths and my husband would say, Hey, are you okay? And then I would realize, Oh, I'm, I'm taking these deep breaths. Right. So then I became more intentional about it and I do use them as I need them throughout the day. The reason I close my eyes is because it gives my brain a break. My brain is not taking in the information if my eyes are closed. I can just focus on my breath and calm my nervous system down and my brain down. And that allows me to reset so that I can go at the next task or restart the task I was doing with a certain sense of calm and focus that I really need. One of the other things is um, Brendan Burchard talks about doing the five by 50 working in 50 minute chunks and then doing a reset every 50 minutes for about five minutes. So you get up, you move your body, you can stretch, you can take a walk, you can do little stair steps on an exercise step, whatever it takes, just move your body, breathe, hydrate. If you reset your body like that every hour or so, you actually engage your brain, the cells of your body, your emotions. Everything gets more in sync and we're more productive that way. We're able to kind of control those things that feel like they get out of control. One of the other kind of reset things we can do is in the morning having a routine. Get up in the morning, read something inspirational, move your body, hydrate, plan your day. In the evening, Go back over the things that you intended to do that day. Congratulate yourself. Celebrate those things. Have some affirmations. Um, look at your next day. Let yourself finish the day and leave it behind and not carry it into the sleep. Make sure that we um, are not constantly in that hamster's wheel of what we need to do. It's time to reset. It's the end of the day. It's a perfect time to reset. Congratulate yourself for the day, what you've done. Give yourself credit. Express some gratitude for how the day has gone. These are things that I've been practicing. And I think those resets are very important for me. Now, this is an honesty moment. When it comes to doing things and being active, I love to be busy. I love to do things. I love to accomplish things. I'm very much driven as a person. So one of my weaknesses is that I can go and go and go and I never really give myself credit for what I've been doing. It's difficult for me to stop and say, hey, I did that thing. Good job, Gina. Way to go. You said you were going to do it and you did it. And that may not seem like a big deal, but when you slow down enough to really um, acknowledge what you're accomplishing, the effort that you're putting in, even if the results aren't what you want them to be, ladies, you and I are trying hard to do and be so many things. And we need to give ourselves credit for the fact that we're trying to do and be those things. And I'm preaching to myself because it is so hard for me to do that. And it's not a false sense of humility, like, oh, I'm not worthy of that. It's literally like, now what? What's next? What's next? What's next? And life is a big list of what's next. So this resetting our minds, stopping, pausing, giving our brain a chance to reset, acknowledging what we're doing throughout the day, celebrating our little wins, celebrating the fact that we're not quitting that we're digging in and we're doing the hard things, whether or not we're doing them to the level that we want to do them, that's where I get hung up. I may not be doing it to the level that I want to do it, but I'm still doing it. I'm still making the effort. I'm still showing up. And so we need to reset our thinking and find a way to celebrate throughout the day and throughout the week, and throughout the month, throughout the year, so that we can um, gain some energy from that reset. We can reset by hanging out with friends. Let me tell you, freshening up your environment, moving the pictures around on the wall, maybe repaint your walls. Sometimes resetting your environment can do wonderful things for the way you feel and think. So like right now in my house, we took all the pictures off the hallway wall, which is hilarious because they've been there for 20 years. So even though I took the pictures off the wall, you can tell very clearly where every picture has been. <laughs> so they're like, ghost pictures on the wall because of the whole house fan like pulling dust 
So there's like perfect rectangles all along the wall. Thank you very much. And I have to clean that before I can paint it. So, you know, that's a reset. It's time for me to feel good in my environment. These are the things that need to be done so that we have joy in our environment. And it gives our mind something uplifting. I know it seems silly, but, you know, just reducing clutter can help you reset. Rearranging your desk. Um, maybe rearranging the furniture to feel better in your living room. These are all resets that can help us navigate overwhelm. Okay, so the reason I talk about moving furniture is when I was a newlywed, I was used to lots of moving, quite a bit of chaos. So what I found was I was constantly rearranging the furniture. I would say every six months, I was just completely rearranging the furniture. It took me years to realize what I was doing. I was not able to relax and rest. So I was constantly resetting my living room to try to find that thing that I was lacking inside of me. So what I did learn from that, though, is sometimes just moving things around a little bit, get some new throw pillows, doing something different, it resets our mind, it resets our perspective, it gives us a little bit of freshness. So sometimes that's a simple thing you could do. It, it may not seem like it's navigating overwhelm, but sometimes if you just cannot cope with something and you need a minute, fluff the pillows, take a walk. Move, move a chair, just declutter for five minutes, reset something, give yourself a chance to re reset instead of powering through. That's what I'm trying to say. Whatever that looks like for you. Because you see, the overwhelm, I think, for me comes from the fact that I'm thinking about all the things all the time, and then I don't allow myself to take those breaks. I don't allow myself to read a book. I don't allow myself to paint because I haven't done what I need to do. I'm like my own worst you know, demanding parent. But those resets, journaling, breathing, moving my body, reading a book. I've read two books in the last month and a half and I just loved it. And it just brought life back to me. It reset my focus. I felt like I had more energy and more ability because I had actually given myself permission to lighten up, Francis. So that's something that I have to work on continually. So that reset one is really kind of my uh, challenge, really, to be completely honest. But because I've been working on how to navigate overwhelm and stress, that has been something that I've been focusing on. And my coach has tried very hard to uh, hold me accountable to that. And at the end of the day, we need to hold ourselves accountable. But if you need accountability, <laughs> a coach is a great way to get it or a good friend, someone who's walking that journey with you. So the first step is to reevaluate, you know, figure out where your energy is, what do you need to do, what do you need to delegate, what do you need to delete, then reset, look at your schedule, look at your routines, and figure out how you can adjust in such a way to be more supportive of yourself, and then throughout the day taking those small breaks so that you have a cumulative energy build throughout the day instead of a cumulative energy drain. And that's really the challenge. It's so easy to just go, 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 and then drain ourselves. So thinking about that. And that brings me to the third step, which is to recharge throughout the day. Now, I sort of talked about this in the reset, but this is where you literally plan throughout your day. How do you recharge? Is it a cup of tea? Is it coffee? Is it a walk? Is it going outside and sitting in the sun for five minutes and allowing those sun rays to touch your skin and make you feel warm? Or is it turning on some music and doing a dance party by yourself? Is it going to the garden and cutting some flowers and bringing them in and putting them in a vase? How can you recharge throughout the day? Those, those things that bring you joy, getting outside of your tasks, so this takes me back to the Brendan Burchard 5 by 50 You know, that's a reset and as well as a recharge. And I think that's why I'm saying these steps are kind of malleable. Sometimes they cross. But that recharging throughout the day, giving yourself a chance to get something in your body that's healthy to eat, hydrate well, make sure that you're not just drinking caffeine, get some water in your system, maybe put some lemon in it. Um... One of the other tips that I've been learning is how to transition 
from task to task. So if you're switching from a phone call to a different kind of task, or you've been writing and now you have to go have a conversation, um, you can recharge yourself in how you transition from one task to the other. Acknowledge that task, you know, give yourself credit for what you've done, really feel good about that task, and then think for a moment, how do I want to go into this next task? Just recharge your energy. Take that, that 10 deep breaths. Really think about how you want to show up. Be very intentional and recharge your battery a little bit so that when you make that phone call or you do that next task, you're more capable of doing it from a good place rather than a depleted place. You know, one of the things that I like to use is... Well, there's two things, actually. Aromatherapy. So sometimes I have my diffuser going with calming or energizing oils that help just create an atmosphere that supports my neural system. You know, scents have been proven to have an impact on our systems, our brains, our central nervous system. So I try to know enough about aromatherapy to know what's going to support the uh, tasks at hand, the energy I'm going to have to put out, maybe even how challenging they're going to be for me. So lavender is, of course, like my go-to. I'll put it on my wrists. I'll put it behind my ears. I'll diffuse it so that I'm supported throughout the day. So aromatherapy is one. The other thing I do, not as consistently as I should, but when I do, it's so helpful. I use YouTube and I do yoga with Adrian. Her January pattern every year is to do a 30-day calendar, and there's always a theme. This year, the theme for 2020 for January was home, and her yoga is gentle. Her motto is find what feels good, and so when I take the time to do her yoga practice, and she gives you permission to do what feels good for you, how it feels good for you. When I do yoga and the stretches and the poses, it gives me a sense of centering and strength. It also helps I can feel the flow in my body is better because once I've lengthened my muscles and stretched them out and I allow, you know, just the flow of even my circulation, it's when you get tense and tight, it blocks all kinds of flow in your body and I'm just talking about my circulation is better when I do yoga. And so is my, um, my calmness of mind. So I use it to give myself anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes tops on my yoga mat, in my living room, by myself. Nobody's around, just me and the television with Adrian. And I do it because her yoga is very straightforward, but very nurturing. And for someone like me, who is very driven, that gentle nurturing coaching from her is the perfect yin to my yang. So finding what feels good is literally a great way to recharge. It could be a dance party. It could be stretching. It could be healthy snacks. It could be hydrating. It could be aromatherapy. So really recharging and stopping and taking a break in a way that feels good for you. I know when it comes to overwhelm, my temptation would be to sometimes do nothing at all and waste an entire day. And let me make a comment on that. I think sometimes it is okay to have a day where the pressures and the responsibilities of life aren't the only thing you're focused on. I think we do need to recharge sometimes and have a day where we go get a manicure or a pedicure or a massage, or we stay home and watch a couple of hours of our favorite program or find someone to sit with and just be the woman that you are, the friend that you are, the mom that you are, whatever it is, having whatever relationship fills your cup. Building that recharge into our lives has been super important for me in terms of the stress and the overwhelm. As a matter of fact, my daughters were talking to me just in the last week. Well, actually, they were talking to each other, and then I had a chance to talk to one of my daughters, and she brought it to my attention that they were talking about the fact that 
they're recognizing that I need some emotional support because I'm trying, as moms do, to be the emotional support to my children and their navigations because they're going through lots of transitions too. And of course, I want to be there to encourage and uphold them and pray for them while they're going through these things. And then, of course, my husband and my mom and my mother-in-law. And then I forget, and maybe you forget, that you have some things that would be helpful to be supportive for you. And I don't have the tendency to recognize, hey, I need some support here. It only comes out when I'm frustrated. But most of the time, I'm just busy doing what I have to do. And my girls really identified that, hey, mom needs some support, which looks like in our family, let's turn off the computer. They're telling me, mom, (laughs) step away from the computer and let's watch a Jane Austen film. One of our favorites. Let's play a game. Let's just be together. And one of them will sit next to me on the sofa or lay up against me and For me, that's incredibly recharging to sit with my daughters and just be together. It doesn't matter if we're doing something like having a cup of tea or coffee, if we're watching a movie, if we're just talking. It's really recharging for me to spend time with my girls. So they're trying to hold me accountable as I navigate the overwhelm, how to make sure that I don't just keep going and everybody realizes, hey, you know, she's always on her computer. She's always taking care of something. She's not connected. And so I do try to be available for them when they need me. And they're trying to make sure that they are keeping a finger on the pulse of whether or not I'm making sure that I'm taken care of too. So that's one way to recharge is to spend time with people that you love and give yourself permission to have a half a day off, not feel like you always have to be going. Because again, True confessions, that's the speed I live at, and I don't mind being at that speed. But I do also realize when I stop and do these recharging things a massage, hang out with friends, spend time with my girls, watching a movie, going out on a quick date night with my husband, or going to Disneyland and listening to swing music, whatever it is, those recharging moments are so important when you're navigating stress and overwhelm. They have to happen in your life. Whatever that is for you, you can't afford not to recharge because we're humans and we have limits. Our emotions have limits. Our minds have limits. Our bodies have limits. And if we are going to continue to produce the love, support, encouragement, and service that we provide to the people around us, we have to recharge, my friends. And that has been something, again, my daughter's challenging me to make sure that I'm reading books that are for fun, not for learning, which I think learning books are fun, but they've encouraged me to consider reading, you know, like I read a book about Julia Child and her husband and their time in Paris. And I was in love with that book and I'm in love with Paris. So it just fueled my love for that city and, you know, just how she navigated her own challenges. And that's something too. Sometimes it's good to remember Everybody is going through something and knowing that we're not alone in this journey, we can recharge when we get together with someone who says, I know what you're going through. So consider that recharge a really big part of your um, steps to navigating overwhelm and stress. In a perfect world, we would do this all the time and we would do it perfectly, but the reality is we can't. (laughs) at least I can't, I don't know. Uh, Perfect is not a goal of mine. Progress over perfection is something that I'm really trying to work on. And there's people involved. It's not just me. It's not just my emotions. It's other people's emotions. So if I'm recharged, if I've really made sure to continually reevaluate, then reset my mindset and how I'm living my life. And then I take time to recharge. What happens is I am more capable of handling what comes my way. I'm also better able to communicate in a way that will be productive and not destructive. Um, It's so hard when we're not charged to maintain our tongue. At least it is for my personality. So this recharging throughout the day, making sure that you carve out time where you don't have to think. I mean, 
seriously, how many of us are good at turning our brains off. But I think what happens is if we don't recharge, then we kind of niggle away our time throughout the day and we're unproductive. Why not just take two to four hours and allow yourself to be completely unproductive, quote unquote. Get your mind, get your body back into a place where it feels ready for the tasks at hand or more ready. And then just get back at it instead of struggling through it because we are running on a low battery. It's so important, ladies. And I'm, again, speaking from experience, that's what this podcast is really about. It's about the fact that I have done it in so many unproductive ways, maybe not as good as I would like to. I think that I have held myself to a really high standard, which makes me feel like I'm failing. And the reality is, if I don't stop and get perspective on my life, reevaluate, reset, recharge, I'm going to end up down that negative road feeling like a failure and beating myself up for being human. And the overwhelm then doubles because now I'm not just overwhelmed by the tasks at hand, but I'm overwhelmed because I feel incapable. And when I do do it, I'm not doing it well. I, I'm hoping, can I get a witness out there that you know, we are our own worst enemies in our minds. And if we do not take time to, to recharge our batteries, we become bigger bullies in our minds than anyone outside of our bodies could be in our lives. So I really want to encourage that one. That's kind of like a really big deal for me because I have to really be reminded to do that. Now, The next step that I've been using in navigating stress and overwhelm is reconnection. Not just reconnecting to people, but I want to encourage you to reconnect to yourself. This has been, I would say, a journey of mine since my 20s, finding the way to reconnect to the best and most whole version of myself. Not just you know, oh, I want to be this person, but how can I connect to that vision of who I want to be? So again, back to Brendan Burchard, he has encouraged his tribe to pick three words that they want to be. It could be intentional, joyful, grateful, active, vibrant, any kind of, uh, we call them sparkling adjectives from our homeschooling years. So find three sparkling adjectives that would be a good way of describing the person that you want to be and how you want to show up in the world. And then what you do is, again, this is Brendan Burchard, and I've been using this with my girls and my and myself over the past few years. You take your phone and you set an alarm in the morning with one word, an alarm in the afternoon with your second word, an alarm in the evening with your third word. And you set those alarms perpetually. So throughout the day, when an alarm goes off and it pops up and it says, vibrant, you have a chance to go back to our very first step, which is to reevaluate and say, am I being vibrant right now? It's a way of reminding yourself to be who you say you want to be throughout the day. So you use those three alarms every day. You don't change the words until maybe you realize, hey, I am living a more vibrant life. Now I need to change that word to intentional or centered or loving or whatever your word is. One of my words right now is to show up for me. I realize that's not one word. My coach was teasing me about that. But the reality is that I have a tendency to show up for everyone else. And I forget to show up for me. I forget to give myself space. I forget to give myself grace. I forget to give myself gentle, kind, loving thoughts and words that I am really trying to do my best. And yes, I do fall short, but I know that I'm trying. And so I just need to reconnect with the fact that this person that I want to be, the one that is respectful and loving to her mother and her mother in law, and caring about their their situations and the fact that they're mothers. I'm a mother. I know how much I love my kids and what I've done for my kids in my heart and mind, not in a martyr sense, but mothers will die for their children. And here are these two mothers 
that are older now and they need that kind of return love and support. And so that's the kind of daughter and daughter-in-law I want to be, but I'm a sinful person who struggles with her attitude. So I have to set intentions for myself and alarms in my phone, but I also need to show up for me and do this like reconnect with who am I? Setting those reminders, putting post-it notes around your house. We buy um, dry erase markers and we write on the mirrors in our house. That's something that we do to encourage each other or to encourage ourselves. And throughout the day, if you have an alarm going off to remind you of who you want to be, you can reconnect with that in the moment and say, okay, I'm going to evaluate. Am I really being this person? And not beating yourself up, but just being curious about, okay, if I'm not being a vibrant person, what is it that's draining that vibrancy? What can I do differently? It's okay. It's been a rough morning. Get back on that saddle and think about how can I bring vibrancy to this situation, if that's your word, or how can I bring more loving attitude or more graciousness or more gratitude or whatever your word is. So for me, the middle of the day, I'm reminded to show up for myself. And the reason I use that word is because I have a tendency, because I get into overwhelm and stress, to waste time in the middle of the day instead of uh, addressing what I'm really emotionally feeling. And I start hitting procrastination, which is basically avoiding something. And typically, it's not the task I'm avoiding. I'm just avoiding something else I have to do, quote unquote, have to do. So that word to show up for me is to remind me that this is the life I want to live. And there's things I want to accomplish. And there's a kind of person that I want to continue to become. So I got to show up for me. I got to quit wasting my time or not doing the things that are important and doing things that aren't important. You know, we all slip into that. And again, there's a time and a place to, quote, waste time and allow yourself that frivolity or that laziness or whatever it is in your vernacular that it feels like and really recognize that I need to reconnect with my purpose with my vision, with my why, what got me out of bed today and why does that matter? So that reconnecting with myself and my vision throughout the day is really helpful. So I have motivational things around my desk. I write things on my mirror sometimes, but my bathroom is like in the back of the house. So that's not as effective as somewhere in my living room or my dining room. So writing things down, keeping them in front of me, putting those alarms in my phone, that reconnection piece is really huge for me to find the balance and the perspective that I need so that I don't continue to live in overwhelm and stress. So that's something that I want to kind of take a moment and make sure that I'm communicating it clearly. So reconnection is knowing who you are and how you want to show up in the world and using those triggers or alarms in your phone, those triggers are there to remind you, to reconnect you to who you want to be so that you can live your life in such a way that you do become that person more often than not. Again, this progress over perfection is such an important part of not getting caught up in stress and overwhelm. There is no way to be 100% at all times but we can continually be resetting our compass toward true north, which is our vision and our purpose and the life that we want to live and how we want to show up in our relationships. Um, This is how I live. I'm just sharing with you. This is what's in my head at all times. When I do this podcast, when I speak to guests, when I take my mom or my mother-in-law somewhere, I'm constantly trying to make sure that I'm present and that I'm not resenting anything, that I am trying to recognize that there are seasons in my life and I need to reconnect with the fact that I can still be me in this season. It may not look the way I thought it was going to look, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. It's like I have a vision ahead of what I want to be, but the journey to get there There's a map that I can take, but I have to understand that there's going to be some unplanned stops, maybe some detours, maybe some construction. You know how that is. If you've ever 
gone camping. We used to go camping every single summer as a family. And inevitably, we'd go to some national park and they'd be doing some kind of major road construction. So we would have a plan to get from point A to point B on this road. Well, it may be the only road, but now you're not going to get there in an hour. You're going to get there in three hours because they let five cars through going one way and five cars coming through the other way. Then you end up with a change in how you get there, but you still get there. It just may take longer. It may go in every direction. So that's okay. That's all part of living life. And that's why I say progress over perfection. If we can reconnect with who we are and how we want to show up in the world, when those obstacles come up that make us feel stressed and overwhelmed, we have a chance to go through these steps. Again, reevaluating. Where am I at? Where's my energy? Is this really important? Do, delegate, delete. Then I reset. Okay, this is what needs to happen today. So I'm really going to focus on this thing. And then recharge yourself. Don't run so hard at that finish line during the day that you wear yourself out and you're grumpy when your husband gets home or when the kids get home. We got to find that balance. And again, progress over perfection each day. Really reconnect with that vision you have for yourself, your life, your business, your job, your family, whatever it is that is your season right now. And I would really encourage you to consider those word alarms because they've been super helpful for me. Brendan calls them triggers. So they're triggers because when the alarm goes off, your brain triggers to, oh yeah, that's who I said I wanted to be. Oh yeah, that's the way I want to show up in my life today. So I would highly encourage you to use that tool specifically to reconnect with yourself throughout the day. And um, it's normal to get off track throughout the day sometimes. Some days you kill it. Like somehow it's like, yes, today was amazing. I got everything done and I feel so good about myself. And then the next day you can be like, what the heck happened today? You feel like you've been shipwrecked on the shore, right? And, and that's all part of navigating life. And the overwhelm and the stress does sometimes come from that reality. But I just want to share with you how I've been trying to dance the dance of overwhelm and stress over the last year and a half. And, you know, if you were to talk to my family, they would tell you that, I'm not always the best version of myself. I don't always respond the way I want to. And I'm an oral processor. So when I'm frustrated, it all comes flying out of my face and everybody knows. So I don't hide it very well. So, you know, true story. I don't do it well all the time. But again, this reconnection piece helps remind me, maybe I sucked at it today and I need to make amends with the people that I offended. I need to fess up when I when I fail but the reconnection piece reminds me that you know what it's a journey not a destination I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and be patient as in complete done set that patience box on the shelf and I'm never going to be impatient again that's not the way it works but if we have these words and this vision and purpose we have something to reconnect to when we fall short or when we lose sight I don't know about you, but sometimes it's just easy to lose sight. When we're in overwhelm and stress, we are, our brains literally shut down. And we have difficulty even thinking well and making good decisions. I've connected with a woman named Dr. Laurel Mellon, and she has an emotional brain tool that has been very beneficial for me. It helps me rewire those faulty emotional wires in my brain so that I can, when I'm in stress, use that tool to make sure I don't go brain offline and do something I'm going to regret later. So, you know, but it reminds me to reconnect with myself. Okay, what am I feeling in this moment? And really facing that emotion, but then working through the emotion, allowing it to be what it is instead of stuffing it, and then reconnecting with, but you know what? You, 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 you wire from stress to joy. You, you don't stay in the stress. So, there's a lot of tools that I'm using, but this reconnection is a really big part of that journey for me. And then the last step that I have is rest. Rest is a challenge. Um, I love nighttime. I love late nights. But then when I'm recording, I need to be up in the morning. So I'm not always on top of my eight hours of sleep. But back to the neuroscience and the brain science, I know people can function on six hours of sleep and some people's bodies are used to that. 
but the brain science says eight hours is optimal. And I do have to say, when I get more sleep, my life is a little bit better. <laughs> my emotional capacity to cope is better. My thinking skills, my decision making. So, you know, rest is a big part of what we need and how we need to show up in the world is kind of dependent on whether or not we're rested, whether or not we feel prepared for even the task at hand. So rest is a big part. And someone was talking about, I wish I could remember who, but they were saying that you can actually take a 20 minute nap every day. And that power nap is really productive for your body and your brain. Uh, my problem is if I go to take a nap in the middle of the day, it's not 20 minute nap. <laughs> I like fall asleep, fall asleep, and I get really deep in sleep. So, but if you can do a 20 minute nap and get that rest, and again, back to what I talked about earlier, taking those 10 deep breaths actually is a way of resting your brain throughout the day. Um, using the emotional brain tools is another way that I kind of work through on my emotions and it calms my system, which is a way of resting my emotional state. So, Rest comes in a lot of ways, kicking up our feet, taking a nap, trying to get eight hours of sleep every night, winding down earlier so that our brains are ready to go to bed. I mean, this is all stuff you've heard before, but I'm just sharing my journey of what I've been trying to do to navigate that process of overwhelm and stress. So I'm just going to review real quick the things that I've been utilizing, and hopefully they'll be helpful to you. The first step is to reevaluate daily, really thinking about what's important. What do I need to do? What can I delegate? And what can I delete? What does not have to be done? Really getting laser sharp about knowing the boundaries between what really is needing to be done and what's tyranny of the urgent and is not really my responsibility. Um, I'm still working on that one. So Stay tuned. I am working. <laughs> but checking your energy, reevaluating. And once you reevaluate, then look at resetting. Reset to that evaluation of what you want to do, what needs to delegate, what needs to go. And you add that to your schedule. You get a good morning routine going and an evening routine. You make sure that you are staying on top of your life as much as you can to move it forward in a way that feels good for you. Make sure you get some hobbies in there so you can reset, do your breathing, journal, laugh a little bit. The third step is to recharge throughout the day. That would couple over a little bit, overlap a little with reset on that five by 50. I know I talked about it in the reset because that's the resetting throughout the day, but it's also the recharging throughout the day where the very main purpose is to breathe, move your body, transition from task to task, make sure that you're giving your mind a break, that you're giving your body some flow by moving it. If you sit a lot, stretch. If you stand a lot, stretch. The sitting, maybe you need to take a little walk, five minute walk, maybe jumping jacks, maybe um, walk down the hallway doing lunges, you know, do something to recharge your body and get the blood flow and the brain flow going. Again, a step four is to reconnect. Really use those three word reminders in your phone as, an, as alarms to throughout the day remind you of the person that you want to be and how you want to show up in the world so that you feel more intentional as the days go on. So really thinking about who you are and how you want to show up in the world and then rest. Make sure that rest is happening. Make sure that you are actually getting the sleep that you need and breaks throughout the day like naps that might supplement that sleep or wake your brain up. Some people do great with naps. Some people don't, but you know your body. So what does that look like to you? And for a lot of people, it's good to have a whole day of rest, like Sunday, where you just sit around and do things that feel good and understand that the, the task list isn't going to go anywhere. It's going to stay. So take that day of rest. Make sure that you have that wiggle room in your schedule for rest so that the overwhelm has, you know, you're getting a break in the activity. So the overwhelm isn't seven days a week if that makes sense. You need a break. 
So take your rest. Take your rest day. Do something you love. Go down to the beach and walk on the sand. Go up to the mountains and listen to the wind in the trees. Get rest. Not just sleep, but rest. Rest your body. Rest your mind. Rest your spirit. Refresh your soul. Find those ways that you can rest from the overwhelm and the stress and the responsibility. So I hope that these five steps will be helpful to you. They have literally been, I realized as I was making notes, this is the process that I've been naturally using, trying to figure out a system to not feel so overwhelmed and not feel so falling short, if you know what I mean, just never quite hitting the mark. I have really high standards for myself. So there's this conundrum that I never feel like I'm actually doing what I need to be doing, even though I'm accomplishing a lot. So if you're like me and you drive like that, these steps can kind of help ground you a little bit and remind you that there are things being done. It may not be in the way you like and in the timing that you like, but the overwhelm for me sometimes comes from the extra pressure I put on myself to be doing more and being more and it's okay to have those goals for yourself, but if they drive you to um, overwhelm and stress, then something's out of balance. And I think it's easy for me to get out of balance on that side. Now, there might be other people who are more mellow, and so their struggle is in the other way. They shut down and overwhelm, and they avoid or whatever. You know who you are and how you show up in the world. So I just want to encourage you. And thank you on my birthday for tuning in. And I hope that me sharing my journey has been beneficial to you. My plan is to do more of these solo ones as time goes on. I have some fun ideas to do some forum style as well. Just women sharing life. And I hope that you understand that Feminine Roadmap really is a tribe of women that is sharing the journey of navigating the challenges and changes of midlife and bringing some of those older women on to reach back to us and encourage us that you can do what you want to do and persistence is so important. So with the variety of women that I have on this show, with the amazing audience and tribe that you guys are, I know that we can make a difference in our lives together. So I want to thank you for being a part of what I do here. And if you head on over to www.feminineroadmap.com forward slash episode 131, you will see these steps there and you can put your name and email address in the pop-up and I will send you a special gift. And then periodically, I just send out an email to let you know what's going on, what's on my mind. So it's low key, but hopefully supportive. I want to thank you again for listening. If you listen on any of the platforms where podcasts are heard, my newest platform is iHeartRadio. Please subscribe and rate. As you subscribe and rate, that elevates the podcast and they push it out to more women. We can find more women to share this message with. Ladies, I want to thank you again. I honor you for joining me and giving up some of your valuable and precious time to grab a cup of something wonderful and be with me each week. I appreciate you greatly and I look forward to sharing more and more life-changing conversations with you as time goes on. Have a great week, my friends, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.